here we are with our third place green OTK deck profile from our first 4.0 locals. Uh, we're here with Cookie, uh, so we're going to get this deck profile done and discuss some thoughts and whatnot on there. So thank you and welcome for joining us. Uh, let's go say hello. Hello, Cookie. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So, uh, any thoughts that you want to add about your deck? Um, it's really fun when it works. It works brilliantly. But as all decks, if you pick, this is one of them decks that it can be quite hard to come back with. Yep. So, the good thing with green, green is turbo, just allows you to climb. Allows you to climb very, very quickly back if you are hit with uh, any sort of removal. So, Gaia Force is not this deck's friend. I don't think Gaia Force is anyone's friend. No, it just seems to hurt this deck a lot more because you spend so much going into chaos after Grand Kawagu. You're generally passing four to six, so it can be a quite painful ending up getting your board cleared but I'll start off with my digi eggs so I've gone for four of Budmon Budmon is while it has digi burst gains a thousand DP yeah. comes up quite often you're either digi bursting a lot of it away or you're leaving it if you've not got jamming and you want to just avoid them 11k threats so things like Lilithmon which is coming back into the format yep. it's great for getting over that one Tanamon for the same reason, if you Digivolve same turn, gain a thousand. And then we move on to the rookies. So we've got Vanillas in Goblimon. Everyone loves Goblimon, two, two cost to drop. Yep. Two more Vanillas in the Argamons. Uh, considerably one of the MVPs of the deck, especially against Yellow Warg, is Terriamon. Okay, what makes Just... that the MVP against Yellow Warg? So, literally, the they pop something else on the board, pop a bigger threat, they go to gain memory with Patamon, can't do it. Against Blue, just turns Hammer Spark off. Against Lilith Loop, it's hilarious because they effectively play eight Hammer Sparks in the deck with Jack's Raid and uh, Hammer Spark itself, and they become useless while Terriamon sat there on board, so they have to deal with that first. Nice. Then we've got Lalamon, who, when Digibursted, returns to hand. Great for just recycling rookies and breaking your hand. Then we've got the card that is worth silly money at the moment, which is Promo Palmon. Those of you that don't know, Promo Palmon, when it's bursted away, gives you jamming. So it's kind of the whole point of the deck. I'll explain that when I get to the level sixes. Yep. Comes up a lot. See it in your opening hand. Brilliant just leave it there and build that stack and then for the turboing we've got four copies of veggie veggiemon six six k body so it avoids need hog four cost to drop one cost to evolve what's there not to like yep. and then surprisingly in this deck we actually run six blockers two woodmon which i call the real blocker because again avoids need hog only five to drop can get you out of a tricky situation. And then four of the starter deck Kabutomi Mom. Yep. Just so the standard sta one cost blocker, yeah? Yep. Just standard one cost blocker. 5k, so can unfortunately get hit by Needhog. But again, allows you to turbo. And then we've got two uh, Kabutomi Mons from BT1, which is the DP booster. So, if ever you're not in a position to digiburst with Grand Wagamon, but you've managed to get that under it, for every suspended your opponent has, gives you that extra thousand. Yep. And then, Bloss four copies of Blossomon, because turboing's fun, being able to get a level five out on board for free, to then be able to tap me and to raise a rookie, or to hatch another egg to try and draw into what you need to get you out of a sticky situation. Love that card. One copy of Argamon. Wish we could have more, but I understand why we don't. I'm happy with one. Yeah, happy with one. Happy it didn't get completely banned, to be honest. No, no, I'm happy I only have to deal with one. If you ever played against Full Saras, 
that, that's yes, I have. I have. <laughs> I have played against full service as a service player in the last meta. It made me big sad when it got hit, but I understand why. Then four copies of the SR Lylamon. Lylamon is brilliant and so underrated. So Digiburst in two to tap one of your opponents can be a blocker, so can allow you to push for game. Yep. But that inheritable when you've got Mimi on board, so when attacking, if you have a tamer in place, suspend one of your opponents, Digimon. Just allows Grand Coagamon to go burr. Then got Grand Coagamon himself, four copies of Digiburst 2 to plus anything on the board security attack, generally targeting himself. But if you're lucky enough to also have a Chaos Mon on board, just give it to the Chaos Mon, less chance of you dying. Yeah, uh, makes sense and then, yeah, and then two copies of Needhog. Needhog is there for when your opponent goes wide. And because they think you're just playing uh, the OTK variant, so some people are putting in Mega Gargo instead of Needhog. But Needhog, if you have got full stack and you're able to digiburst when they've got lots of threats out. So I've played against purple players. Uh, I thought I was in an unwinnable position with two Millennium on on board and a level five on board. Uh, they'd swung with all three the turn before. Hadn't seen that I had a full stack in raising. Went need hog, cleared board, ended up winning that game. Then we've got uh, three Chaos Mons. Oh, how I want these in alternate art. Yeah, I was meant to be getting some of the promo stamped ones through, but the person mislisted them. Ah, that's rough. I'm uh, actually doing a pre-release this weekend and getting so both myself and my partner. So hopefully I can get my hands on at least some stamped ones, if not an old art. I mean, but that's the dream. Yeah, going Chaos Mon for six. On top of Grand Kawagu, not passing turn immediately, being able to attack through a threat. So, Yellow War Greymon does not like this card. Also, doesn't like checking it in security. No. So, Needhog being 13 and Chaos being 14 also allows if someone does go. So, I've seen people get greedy playing Metal Guru Mom. So, before they actually go for their options, they want to get that swing in and blow it up or they actually use the options, go to swing with it, blow it up, and then they can't go into Millennium on to punish even further. So can just be a nice security check. Then we're on to the options and tamers. So two needle sprays. I've ummed and ahed about these on whether they are better than Flower Cannon or not. Yeah. I quite like my uh, higher rarity things, and I've got the Flower Cannons already, but needle spray is just better because of that security effect where you suspend something and it can be anything, so it can be a blocker to punish and push the game the turn after, and the fact it returns to hand. Think... You'll be surprised the amount of people that forget about it returning to hand. Yeah, I didn't know it returned to hand, to be fair. I mean, we are staring at a meta where most of the Digivolutions are just building blocks now, though. Um, with the deck I played on, on the day gone, um, the only way you saw a blocker is if I did you burst it out. Yep. So you do, you do get that, but the needle spray, I've just found it saved me a few times, saved me at my locals, saved me in a Gordo's tournament as well. Then, as standard, one copy of Hidden Potential. Hidden Should Potential. One. Yep, Hidden Potential into Chaos Mon is just absolute value town. You're laughing when you can do that or even into Needhog because then you can burst with Needhog, clear board and you're not passing on stupid memory the fact that Needhog is 5 to evolve and then 3 Mimis. Mimi is effectively so if we look at the hybrids in the current meta it's a little bit like them yeah. if you've got a level 5 on board people forget about it they think oh he's just got a blossom one on board can't really do much You've got an egg sat there already in raising. You just go rookie, tap Mimi, game. Yep, this happens to me. So I had that happen quite a few times. I wouldn't play any more than three. I've seen people trying to play the Izzy in this build. I'm not personally a fan. 
So I think this build's kind of where it needs to be. The only thing I've attempted to do is actually up the number of Terriamons from two to maybe four or three. And if I was to make that change, it would probably be the vanilla Ragamons because you've already got four vanillas in Goblimon there. I can see that. It'll help you against D Brigade when they go for their big guy. Yes, Shuffle exactly. Five, and then all of a sudden they're going, haha, I'm back to free memory. And you're like, oh, right. Yes, exactly. So there's, stop, there's so many different memory gaining effects. Um, things like when you're playing Red Security Plus, Atomic Blaster, and if you do want to block that ridiculous swing after they've Atomic Blasted three times, save them gaining nine memory, just block it. Oh, yeah. If you've got if you've got a Terriamon on board, that makes red players very sad, as red is my other deck, and I've had that happen to me against green. Yeah, red's recovering a lot of memory now. It's almost like it's uh, just a remake of Yellow Shine. Yes, it is. But yeah, that's the profile. Awesome. So, um, what what is your ideal combo line then? So, ideal combo line is I will just be one moment while I get this set that's up. That's all good. So quite commonly in this meta, if someone hasn't got the greatest of hands, they will just throw down Tamer. So I know Purple loves having Matt out. Matt is perfect for them. It is now. It is now. It wasn't before. Yeah. No, Matt is very much needed, though, I would say. So if we hatch a Bugmon, Bugmon is perfect. And then if we went Palmon, so obviously that's free. And you would go Vegemon, and then so for four cost you can get all the way to Blossom, and then it, as they've got a Tamar, you go into Grand Kawagu in Raising, so it can't be Trump Sorted. Um, obviously, you've had the draw off the Palmon, draw off the Veggie, draw off the Blossom, draw off the Grand Kawagu, so or recycling your hand, you're cycling through your deck and if you can manage to get a Chaos Mon for the following turn and they've not got a blocker, you literally raise Digiburst 4, so Palmon would give you jamming you'd slam for 3 checks as long as you don't hit any options that can hit suspended Digimon yep. you're fine and then you simply restand yourself, go Chaos Mon as it's a floating effect, he maintains the security checks you pierce through, ever what, through whatever body they've got on board and you clear their security. Even if you're playing against yellow and for some reason they wanted to recover one first turn, say if they bricked yep. and gave you the memory, you're still doing six checks, they're ending up on nothing and you've got a 14k body on board to be dealt with. Nice. Very, very nice. That deck so that's ideal combo. It is. I was playing against a Lilithmon loot player at my locals on Thursday, yeah. and he had he just went Raremon immediately, which is quite often their opening play. So he went Raremon, gave me four. I built Grand Kawagu in stack. He proceeded to try and grow his himself uh, uh, the next turn, so I decided to go into Surplusmon and then into Lilithmon and get ready for the following turn. Yep. Not realising what this deck does. Did the three checks. Did hit a Trump Sword, but obviously I wasn't standing. So, Trump Sword didn't matter. Went Chaos, et through the Lilithmon and the rest of his security. Left him with no board and no security. So, I think in a 50 minute timer, that finished in 46 minutes left on the clock, round one. That's pretty solid. Yeah, I was uh, quite happy with it. He wasn't, obviously, but that's uh, the way Digimon goes. Oh, that is it. Right, so... That is... So, any thoughts and whatnot that you'd like to add? Matchups, how would you place uh, matchups, anything like that? So, um, any red deck and some yellow decks if they're playing Eden's Javelin you have to be wary you can't just go full combo build one big stack rely on it to eat all security and then play little guys to poke for game yeah 
because if you do that and um, first check is Eden's Javelin, you can get severely punished. And if you've not got that jamming Palmon, don't just you can't just play this single mindedly, you can't just go right Digiburst 4 straight away. So if I had that exact same stack, however, I didn't have the Palmon. If I go grab another rookie, if I had Lalamon, which is nice, it still returns to hand, yep. I would burst the Lala and the Veggie, and then I would proceed to only do two checks because I'm at 12,000. Yeah. There's less chance of dying. Uh, I'm sure Yellow War, War Greymon players can attest for if you're swinging with 11,000 regularly, the amount of times you die in security. Because we are getting more and more things like Chaos Mon, Omni Mons are still floating about in the odd deck. They're also uh, accessible. Yeah, the Ancients as well, they're 13,000. So you've got to kind of assess what deck you're playing, how big their boss monster is. So against purple, don't just assume it's Lilith Mon. They could be Mast A, they could be Pluto Mon, which is 12,000. So even then, I'd still be skeptical swinging on 12,000. Yeah. I mean, there could be a Millennium waiting for you. Exactly, there could always, there's always Millennium on as well. He's not easy to get right now, but there's a few people around with him still. Yeah, I, I think uh, my purple profile, I've got two or three of them in there, because I've managed to pick them up while they were cheaper, but yeah. Mm. But yeah, you've just got to kind of assess the risk and not play single-mindedly. And I immediately pick this deck up. First time playing, it was like, right, okay, let's get Grand Wagamon out. Let's just demolish the security stack. And the first time I hit a Millennium on in security, first check out of all three, yeah. and it died. It just made me sad and kind of had to reassess the way you play the game. Yeah. So go go full com combo if you've got the Palmon, which if you're looking to build this deck, I avoid paying stupid prices for them. I managed to get, uh, I think, three for a total of about 20, 2250. Yeah. I got three of these and pulled one myself, which unfortunately at the moment, that's about the price you're paying for, one, yeah. for them. Like the hollow ones, I initially wanted to hollow, hollow them, but not at the current prices. No, they're about 30 quid hollow, and about 20 to 22 regular right now. Yes, and the American market, they're even worse. They're around $50 for a normal one, apparently, yeah. I've been seeing in the chat. We've which is about 37. Yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Supply and demand, I guess. Yeah, definitely supply and demand. Okay. And also, also with the deck, you can do lots of fun things with uh, Lylamon. So Lylamon obviously allows you to burst. So if you have got full stack and they've got blocker, because Granko Wagamon does not like blockers because he doesn't have piercing. Yeah. If you wanted to go, say, you went Palmon, Veggie, Lila, and say this is slightly later on in the game and we've also got a Tamer out. Yeah. So... If you've got Tamer out, happy days, you can go norm, go regular combo because Lylamon allows you to tap something when you swing. Yep. Uh, so you select the blocker, they can't block when you attack. But if you've not got this, before you go into Grand Kawagu, you just burst away the Budmon and the Vegemon, suspend them on, go into Grand Kawagu for three, you can then proceed to burst, give yourself at least a security check plus one. Okay. So, because, because the deck is so focused on digibursting, things like, uh, uh, it's one of the more budget decks at the moment, but who, uh, Digisource Removal is actually one of the hardest matchups, because yeah. you just have to do everything in raising, because otherwise you just lose all your sources and the deck itself kind of stalls. Yeah, Digisource Removal with Omni is, uh, is something that got ignored in BZ1, but coming... Well, BD1 and 1.5 are coming into BD4. The deck's solid. It, yeah, it's a very popular deck because you've got Security Check Plus as a red deck that 
they remove you just do one check so they kind of remove the point of that deck yeah uh purple lives and breathes with its digital no it's um inheritables so things like lady devi allowing you to pop an extra rookie when you play an option your devi mom for vengeance your Xiaomon for Vengeance, your Drawing Engine with your Gabumons and your Eggs. Like getting that removed, I think you can atone to that from a Thursday night. I think the game I tuned into was uh, you playing against the Blue Digisaur remo removal. I still won. <laughs> but yeah, I could. Uh, you I can you did still that win, but it becomes, frust it becomes very frustrating. Yeah, the uh, frustration is what's going to force you into a misplay when you're playing purple there. Yes, because purple is very skill reliant. This is skill reliant at reading matchups. Actually, playing the deck itself isn't overly complicated, but you have to know your matchups and know the meta. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're just going to get into that single minded approach, digiburst everything away, swing, die first, check, and then struggle to regain the momentum you can because everything's fairly cheap to play. But you don't want to really be wasting resources like that. No. What I've noticed about green, you can still drag them out of resources in a long game. Yeah, it, th this deck is not built for a long game. If you've gone past probably turn, I don't know, 7 to 10, no, you're going nowhere. Um, just because you've got no way to get resources back, I believe green does get has just got a tamer where you can recycle a digi egg but you can't really recycle anything else yet yeah so just recycling the egg can be a, can be a nice tech if you don't want to run a third mimi but yes. uh, inherently mimi is so much better yeah it sounds like they're literally just putting on a bandage on a hemorrhage so <laughs> yeah exactly it's the one thing I hope for in future sets. I've not really seen anything for it, and green doesn't get much love from here on out, really. Unless you want to count Eos Mon as technically green. I mean, you can count it. I think green right now is probably looking like it's going to be in a solid position to hang around with the small amount of support it does get, just to swap it up a little bit, so. Yeah, things like Ancient Troymon looks cool, but not a wonderful card coming out of BT. I think that's six. Not had anything when it announced about seven yet for green. I would be interested to see. Yep. Same. I'm looking forward to the announcements for seven because I'm pretty sure I know exactly how I'm editing all of my main decks until BT6 at this point. Yeah, so I know uh, green Digiburst slash OTK gets actually stronger in BT5. Yes, and the great thing is, n none of the bits in that are expensive, so you've got things like Weedmon, which is when it's Digiburst to gain a memory. Who doesn't enjoy that when that's the premise of the I deck? I like the fact that they're bringing Digiburst forwards, but they're not upgrading it, because there's Inheritables that are going to return the sources, give you a memory, stuff like that. I like the fact that they're playing on the Digiburst as a as a one-off or a two-off cost per that Digimon, I think that's amazing. Rather than silly effects, that is, once per turn, flip this back to hand and attack everything on the board. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think the way Bandai has done this game, I think it is in, in there for the long haul. As, I long, think. as long as they can keep it balanced in the way it is, I think it's good, because we still got... Yeah. The blue, I think we, the blue omni and stuff like that. We still have these 1.5 decks that are still relevant because power creep isn't a thing, and you're able to upgrade into the newer stuff with relative yeah. safety and security. So, I worry we may lose a few players when we get to BT5 because Lord Nightmon, for anyone that's seen it or played against it, is just oppressive. Yeah, it's but, oppressive. But if you look at that's just for one format. If you look at the Japanese graphs for what are coming out, I know we can't go directly off because we do have because we did get some things at different times to them, like FOMOs. Yep. Um, yellow does appear to be falling off a cliff, which, as someone that's an anti-yellow player, that does make me quite happy. I mean, that works for me. 
I can live with that. Yeah, I, I can live with that. And they have just announced that uh, Lord Nightmon gets an ult out through the July Cup. Oh, nice. Well, that's going to make that July Cup a great little watch, or at least a, an amazing entry. Hopefully, we, hopefully they're going to keep it up and they're going to keep having X amount of tables for a remote full of people that can't make it there. Yeah, very much so. And um, also, with these cups, like I didn't like what Bandai did with the first 1.0, 1.5 tournaments, where it was just stuff you could buy from Bandai Direct. Yeah. Now they're coming out with these alt arts, like the alt art Coromon and Greymon, that are coming out in the first Bandai event, I believe, end of this month, next weekend. Yeah, as long as they can stay balanced to the format, I reckon that's a win. Yeah. I'm exactly in the same boat. Because we don't need a card game where all of the powerhouses are locked behind essentially a £200 paywall <laughs> because it's a promotional material. Yeah, so they they need to make... So the promos for this set is the first time anyone's kind of really felt that. Yeah. Where at Great Legend Packs, you have no other way of getting them other than buying boxes. So for the people that can either only afford one box or can't afford the box just by singles yeah. it becomes a lot more painful so this is the first set where I actually went all in and bought a couple of boxes which for me was four four boxes was more than enough Yeah, it didn't pull too great out of them but with the trades I managed to get I did manage to snag myself the promos I needed, the box toppers I needed but that's one thing that is making me very happy is the fact that Main boy in the deck himself can now be picked up for around four pound. That I wish my main boy were that cheap. <laughs> They're not far off, but the, with the colours I play, the main boys aren't the expense. Yeah, it, it generally tends to be if you do want to move towards alting your deck, which again is just a preference. Yeah. Um, it's like oh, uh, Lilamons, love the art, not paying, what, first opening weekend they were 35 a copy, they're now about 20 a copy. Yeah. But that's still, that's still £80 for a copy of level 5, so. I mean, I'm waiting you for can otherwise like Lotto Mon, which is a popular deck, uh, which is a popular tech for your colour as well, just to skyrocket up to 6, 7 quid, up from their 50 Yeah. Point. Yeah, uh, there's a few things in this set because it was so readily accessible and I guess it was slightly delayed, but we managed to get enough of it. Yeah. I think, especially in the UK, um, prices have fallen out on this set. Like, so things are dirt cheap, but we are now slowly beginning to see things skyrocket back up. Yeah. So, so the fact that Pluto Mon at one point was a four pound card is ridiculous when you look at what that does in the next meta. That's mm -hmm. going to be back to 15, I think, by the time BT5 comes out. Well, I've got three on my four, so very, very soon we're going to have a lovely little Pluto Mon profile going. Um, yep. And if you look at what Lilith Mon did from set one to now, the fact that Lilith Mon, because Lilith, Lilith Loop is a thing, is now a thirty pound for a regular art and ninety for an old art. It's one of the most expensive oh, no, cards in the I'm game. I'm really happy. I've got more than a playset of that. To be fair. Do you have a playset of the regular or the old, Mickey? Both. I have about seven of the regular and a full playset of the old. That is never leaving my folder. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. It's like uh, so with the flower cannons. One of the main reasons I want to play them is because I've got the. Uh, Tamer box ones. I've managed yeah. to get two, get hold of two of the Tamer box parts oh, for them, and they are gorgeous. Biggest mistake next... I made was selling my um, flower cannon that I got from my one and only box. Oh, what your uh, oh uh, flower cannon? Yeah, I sold that as soon as I got it. I I got a fiver for it. I I then proceeded you... to get told off by lots and lots of people telling me how much it was worth. <laughs> yeah, there was. A I I bought them and I paid twenty five pound a card. Yeah, I wish I knew that, but you know. But this one that gets this one that gets a rarity bump uh, in the new promo packs. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be definitely trying to get my hands on that as soon as my uh, my locals start running. 
tournament pack two events because unfortunately theirs haven't been delivered yet. Yeah, well, so, so there's a lot wasted. of there's a lot of issues regarding Ness and scalpers right now. So, <laughs> oh, and that's why I'm not getting them off the second hand market. Well, no, I agree. Right. Well, thank you very much for stopping by and helping me with the deck profile. Uh, no worries. It's been a pleasure. Up. Thank you. So. I'm going to get the outro done here, but thank you very much. Thanks.